As we start in our second part of the course, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of software here you can use for data collectors. The first one is Serve CE. Serve CE is uh, a software from Carlson, manage the data collector. Uh, right behind me here, I have a total station. I'm gonna be using two cameras, uh, one to show you the instrument. Uh, if you follow uh, my camera here, you can see I have a laptop and I have a cable that connects to the total station. Uh, total station, the same model that we have uh, used in class. Uh, right now, it reads out of range. Mm -hmm. And we know that when it reads out of range, it's indicating that it's not in level. So I quickly will fix that. I have a total station here set up over the carpet, <clears throat> very similar to uh, our setup in our tests. So uh, the occupancy point. <clears throat> and in the far wall over there, you can see that I signal a north arrow. So those are going to be our control points. It has this yellow hard hat. And when you click the hard hat, uh, the emulator is just a demo. It's limited to 30 points, but for the purpose of this demonstration, it will work. First thing it asks, do you want to continue with the last job or do you want to start a new one? I'm going to start from scratch. And I'm going to call this new job. I usually label them with the name trash so that um, I can get rid of them. And I store them in a temporary directory. Okay. Otherwise, my uh, hard drive gets filled pretty quickly. Do you want to work in metric or do you want to work in imperial units? So you make your selections. We're going to stick to metric here. Um, I normally accept everything to keep things simple. Unless I have a reason to change the options, I will stick to the default ones. So um, this software has three interfaces. The first interface is a menu. And you can see the menu with tabs in here, file, equipment, surveying, which is the action you're going to perform. Kogo refers to apps, applications, actually, that you can calculate areas, you can calculate distances and perform a few um, calculations. There is a calculator here built in, scientific, or even for uh, converting units, meters to feet, for example. So let's go back. Okay, so that's Kogo, and road is for highway designs, some apps that you can use. Okay, the main thing for this project, you're gonna use file, equipment, and survey. So let's start with the file. We already selected a job. Uh, we have job settings, and we have points. At this point, the points are empty because it's a new file, there's nothing in there. So that's the first task we're going to do, we're going to add a couple of points. We need to do that because we need to define an occupancy point and we have to uh, have a backside point as well. So I'm going to use a hundred, a hundred for my occupancy point. And I'm going to give it a description. It's always a good idea to add descriptions. Description, I'm, I'm calling in OP, occupancy point number one, okay? Uh, I will need a second point, and that second point, I'm going to put it directly north. Let's say five meters north. So my northern is 105. My easting remains 100 uh, in line with the north, okay? So this point, I'm going to use it as a north control or description north. 
Okay, so now I do have two points. I can close out of here. I go back to the menu. And this menu, like I mentioned before, it has tabs. Okay, and within each tab, you have a bunch of options. So we're done with the file. We go to equipment. So I'm going to be able to use this program with either a total station or a GPS unit. Okay, in this case, it's a total station, um, manufacturer and model. Okay, there's a whole bunch of them to choose from in the software. So the one that we're using is a Sokia and it's a model 530R. So it's in the set 30R series. Uh, I have to define how I connect. By default, I'm connecting with a cable, which is what I'm using. And I am using the default settings of the cable uh, serial connection, um, including ball rate, parity. Those characteristics have to be consistent with the total station. And if you go to the total station, uh, if we look in the menu here, okay, I can hit escape. I can go to configuration. And if I scroll down to com setup, this tells me the ball rate and the characteristics, uh, the parity, bits, and uh, other parameters that have to be consistent with uh, my um, software. So just a quick check. Normally, you don't have to do this, but I show this in case you may run into some connectivity problems. This would be the way to, to adjust or correct. So uh, once you got that, you need to stay in measurement. So F1 here, and you should be able to see on top of my index finger here, it shows the abbreviation of measurement. That's important that you see that. Because if, for example, you have been using the tilt function, okay, and if I leave it there, I need to use the tilt in order to level the equipment, all right? But once I'm done with the leveling, you need to hit escape and be sure that we see measurement in there. Otherwise, you will have a connection error. All right, back to the software. So in here, uh, with everything correct, uh, settings, I'm going to use no prism here. I'm just using reflector less. But if you were using a prism, you would have to choose the characteristics of the prism, of the prism that you're using. OK, so by here, we're going reflector less. I'm indoors, so 20 degrees Celsius is reasonable. So I'm not going to change this, staying with the default 20 degrees. And I'm going to accept. Green accepts, red escapes, or goes back to the previous one. So I'm going to go green. We go to survey, store points. We define occupancy point, backside point. We go to height of instrument also. We go to backside. The reminder that we're in reflectorless mode. We aim our total station to our backside and we hit set angle and read. So that seems to work now. It's taking a reading, okay? And it's alerting us that we said the backside should be about five meters away, but in fact, it measures 3.7 meters. So there's a difference in there. But that's okay, because all I was doing, I was using the north to rotate and realign the equipment with the map. So I'm good with that. Okay, I accept. And here I have a display of my map. But it also has control features here. There is an R that if I press it, it will take a reading. An S that will store the information, the, the measurement. T for traverse, O for offsets, C for configuration, and then the little tripod here 
it gives me direct access to the occupancy point if I need to redefine it. And sometimes you need to do that because you need to do kind of like a turning point. Okay, so you need to reposition the equipment into a new location. So you may have to move it over and select a new occupancy point and a new backside. So that's what that those icons are. What we're seeing right now is the control interface. Um, it's controlled because it does have control buttons here. If I close, I go to the menu interface. The menu interface, as we started, it had the file, the equipment, the survey, applications, and road applications. But uh, we can also get into a map in here. If you look at the top right there, that globe brings us into a map. And the map is like an AutoCAD um, plan view, two dimensions, and it shows information, uh, the scale. Uh, you can do things like put a um, uh, draw, a grid, for example, the grid of coordinates, say that we put every uh, meter, uh, we put a grid. So the command will be on. And instead of 10 meters, I'm going to put it uh, every meter, one meter. Okay. So if I accept, you see, it puts this square grid that it shows every meter apart. So if you count the squares, the scale bar should have seven of them. All right. Um, a lot of options here. You can go into view and you have view options. Uh, you can select show the scale or don't show it. Okay. You can select the type of symbols for a point, this um, font size, you can show elevations, you can show a description, or maybe not, just the points alone. Um, the menu is pretty intuitive. From left to right, you start with files. In a file, you can import and export drawings like uh, AutoCAD, okay? And that's handy because you may want to use a base map. Um, so that you have a, a base to start with and then drawing, whether you want to draw a circle, a line and so on. Um, if you want to move elements, transform, and you can move or rotate, you can change the scale, uh, you can mirror a lot like AutoCAD commands. And I'm going to close it. So I go back to the menu because what we need to do now we started with two points. We see the two points here, but now we need to create our project. All right. So we're going to survey. We're going to store points where position occupying station one. And we did rotate our program or our total station. We aligned it with the north and north was point two. So now, where is my target? Well, that's up to you to define. You need to choose a project. You have a full description of what the project is about, what equipment you're going to use, and what's your deliverables, what you need to produce. It's an AutoCAD drawing. You choose the area. It could be indoors. It could be outdoors. And the idea is that you define a hypothetical construction project. All right, and you produce a drawing that it could be of sufficient quality to be issued for tender. Imagine that your construction goes to bid processes and that contractor needs to look at the information and decide, am I going to bid on this or not? Okay, so that will reflect the quality of your, of your drawing. But with that in mind, uh, I'm going to pretend project here. Okay, we're seeing the software there. So right now with my camera, you can see I have a total station here, but I'm located in the basement of my house. So um, I set up here, I pointed to the north, we align, and I'm going to make up my project 
just saying that in this central space of the basement, I'm planning to put a fountain or maybe a monument uh, to the best teacher around. And uh, so something that I make up, obviously I'm joking, uh, but you make your own uh, project idea. So that's my project idea. So if I was to put a fountain or a monument in here, what do I need to know? Well, I need to know the dimensions, how much room I got, okay? So very simply, I will decide to draw a couple of points. How about that far corner that you see over there? If you see my finger, I'm aiming to the wall there, okay? So I'm going to get a shot of the northwest corner. I aim exactly to the point, and then in my software, I hit R for read. When I do that, the total station takes a reading, and it shows me a tentative location with a question mark, and it's question mark because it's waiting for me to give it a description, Northwest Wall. And I'm going to hit S for save. <clears throat> now I'm going to aim to the other corner, the Northeast corner. I point, I go to the data collector software, I hit read, I get a second point. And this one is going to be point number four. I'm going to call it Northeast Wall. So I just made myself a drawing when I store it. Okay, I have a drawing with two points and so on. You can appreciate how quickly you can get a, a decent set of measurements in here. I'm going to stop there because I want to show you that if I get out of the control, uh, the interface, I go into my menu, I go to file, and the points are there. I have the two that I started with, occupancy point, north point, and I also have the northwest and northeast corners of my wall. If I hit the globe right there, I see the map, I close, I go back to the menu. If I want to see the control interface, I got to go back to survey and store points, and now I can see my controls in here. So I'm ready to get additional points. All right, once you're done with all the points and I have them in a map, I can export them. I go to file, a DXF or a DWG. I recommend you do it in both formats because it gives you options. Once you go into the AutoCAD lab, fine. And when you do that, you can select points Okay, I'm going to export the points and I didn't have any lines in there. So it doesn't matter if you click it or not, because there's nothing. It saves it as AutoCAD 2000. All right. So I'm going to take that option. It's saving it. So now you're going to have a DWG file that you can open in AutoCAD and it will have those uh, few points that you did. Okay, I would uh, probably save it also in a different uh, format as well, text as well, because one of the options is to save AutoCAD text right here. Okay, so I tend to do both and see what it works better with the AutoCAD version that I have. Then you just file exit, and now your job is to do the cosmetics, which is going into AutoCAD, opening the file and prepare a drawing. Okay. And that's, you've taken AutoCAD one and two courses. So you should be able to uh, complete the rest of the requirements submitting this um, project on time.